Today on Film Riot, we talk muzzle flashes. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes mystery out of the effects and techniques. Going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. And if you missed it, over the past week, we have released two new awesome packs to our store. The first was our LUT pack, which we released last Thursday. It's a color grading pack inspired by movies with looks that we love. Link for that in the notes below. But now, on Monday, we have released another pack. This is our Muzzle Flash and Smoke Assets pack, which was made by the unbelievably talented folks at Rampant Design. Link to them in the notes as well. They have all sorts of amazing goodies on their site. But this pack is filled with almost 200 muzzle flashes and 60 smoke assets. And smoke really is one of the most important things when you really want to sell a muzzle flash, but we'll get into that later. But in here we have muzzle flashes for whatever you need, like shotguns. Not, not that kind. Ah, okay. Sorry. That one's on me. One sec. I got it. Now? Yes, now. <laughs> we also have muzzle flashes for handguns like Glock, revolvers, cowboy gun, machine gun, pirate gun, nerf gun, finger gun, braveheart sword, pair of scissors, Pew! jar of peanut butter, pretty much anything that you need a muzzle flash for is the point that I'm making. So if you're looking to up your muzzle flash game, go here to check it out. Link is also in the notes below. But since we just released this pack, just like last week, I figured now would be a good time to take a look at some tips for better muzzle flash effects. So first off, right off the bat, I know there'll be the know-it-all comments trying to say that muzzle flashes aren't realistic and that guns don't have muzzle flashes each time, which is not true. When you pull the trigger, you are setting off a small explosion. Of course, some are designed to have very little to no muzzle flash like military grade and higher end weapons, but others like the AK-47 have downright massive muzzle flashes, almost Hollywood level large. Of course, movie versions of this is much bigger, but that's entertainment. Hype up everything for a bigger experience. Some films go realistic, some go massive. It's just a style choice. I think a reason a lot of people have come to think that guns don't always have a muzzle flashes because we're used to watching them in a video, which as you know, we're usually filming at 24 to 30 frames per second. So the camera ends up missing that flash, similar to you blinking and missing it. But if we look at a gunshot in slow motion, like this clip here from my friend Tom Gilmet, you'll see what it looks like in reality. Tom also has all kinds of awesome content on his page. Again, link for that in the notes below. So contrary to what I see a lot of people commenting on, it's more realistic to add them in than it is to leave them out. Then it's up to you to decide what style you want, smaller, more realistic, or bigger Hollywood type. My personal style usually goes bigger. But enough of that, let's jump into our first tip. Tip number one is a practical one. It's about choosing the right type of gun. There are blank front firing prop guns that are very realistic and get rid of the need for post work a lot of the times, but they do bring up safety concerns that are more intrusive due to the sound. A safe alternative would be airsoft guns. The great thing about this is you are going safer and silent, but still getting that realistic blowback from a lot of the handguns. So take this shot here. No gas in the gun, so we have no blowback on the slide, but if we put the gas in, in, we get the slide moving back with each shot. It's a simple way to add a lot of realism. Tip number two is practical again, and that is light. You can use something like a clamp light to hit your talent with some practical light to simulate light from the muzzle flash that we'll be putting in later. Like we talked about in the Ghostbusters episode, as much practical that you can add into your VFX shot, the better. Tip number three moves into post-production with a shell ejection. If it's a medium shot or close up, adding shells is a nice little detail that is overlooked a lot, by us included, but without them, the shot looks off. To add it in, we use a particle system, usually particular and make sure that there is a variation in speed, spread, and rotation. Every gunshot is different, so every shell should act differently too. For hero shots where it matters and you can't get away with just a shell image, we use Element 3D and then hand animate the gravity. Tip number four is blending mode. Something I see a lot is people just throwing the flash on and calling it done, which usually ends up looking very fake depending on the asset that they're using. So make sure to throw that bad boy in a blending mode if need be. Usually add is the way to go and maybe drop the transparency a touch depending on the shot. For tip number five, we have blurs and distortions. This one is definitely one we don't see enough of. A gunshot is a tiny explosion, which means there's a huge release of energy and pressure into the air right outside the barrel. This causes the air to rapidly expand because it's moving a large volume of air, but in a smaller case. So it will actually cause the light to bend inside the volume and distort what's behind it. What's helpful about this in compositing is that if you have a busy background, the distortion and blur lends itself to have the muzzle flash stand out more because it's not being lost in the scene. Tip number six is sparks and debris. With gunshots, there's not only smoke, but a bit of particles and even sparks that happen. A bullet leaving the barrel will leave scratch bits flying off of it, even in the environment directly in front of the barrel. There's a lot of pressure being released all at once and 
it just looks cool too. We'll typically add some sparks and a little bit of dust just so there's something subtle here to look at, enough that you pick up on it but not really realize that it's there. With all of this, it really is the little details in your frame that make it look great, even if they only last a few frames. We have a few tips left to get into, but first, let's pay some bills. Ah! Oh, oh no! Ha! Who knew garbage bags were just like flesh? Ha! Ah! If you're a filmmaker, entrepreneur, or innovator, Domain.com is a place to go when the next idea hits you. I know you've probably heard the list of available domain extensions is growing, but you now have the opportunity to name your site, build your brands in ways that were never before possible. Choose from a growing list of 400 plus domain name extensions like .com, .org, .design, and .club. And they give you some love and they give you 25% off their already affordable prices with domain names, web hosting, and email. Just use the coupon code FILMRIAN at Domain.com's checkout. And when you think domain names, think Domain.com. Logo. Jumping right back in, tip seven is tracking. And with this, I'm not talking about tracking the gun. Right after the shot happens, everything that was created and comes from the gun is no longer tracked to the barrel, but instead the environment. What I mean is, for example, once the smoke is out of the barrel of the gun and the gun is moving, the smoke will not follow that barrel anymore. It's gonna react to the scene and the camera movement, or else it's just gonna look wrong. This may seem obvious, but I've seen this one done wrong a lot. Tip eight is reflections. Whether it's the reflection of the actual muzzle flash in something like a mirror or a window or any other reflective surface, or just the reflection of illumination on your surroundings, you're always gonna wanna add that in to really push that realism, especially if it's a shot that's in shade or a darker area. Take our short film Portal Combat, for example. Toward the end, there's a shot of Todd shooting at our characters in a darker area next to a very reflective car. Because of the lack of light, the muzzle flash would light the environment, but also reflect off the car. If you go back and look, we added reflections in all the correct places. It's really subtle, but goes a long way in making your effect live in that scene. Tip nine is smoke, another one that gets passed over far too often, but again, by us as well, usually due to time constraints. So let's take a look at the difference. First, with just the flare and no smoke, than with smoke. It makes a huge difference in realism for me to add that smoke in, since again, in real life, that smoke is more prevalent than the flash itself. Of course, we are using our smoke assets from our new pack, so I'll grab it, drop it in, add unmold, or throw it into a blending mode if need be, then drop the transparency a touch if needed, color grade to match my scene, and we're done. It's ridiculously simple to add in, and it makes all the difference. But if you did wanna go with that no flash look, since there are those few guns that don't have any muzzle flash, including suppressed weapons, you can just add in the smoke asset like we just did, and there you have it. Tip number 10 is to always be thinking safety. In filmmaking, everything that can go wrong usually does, and when you're working with guns, real or fake, what could go wrong is nothing to joke with. So, whenever dealing with guns in any way, always go above and beyond to make sure that you and your team are safe. Inform who you need to in the area, including your local police department, and use common sense. Even if it's a Nerf gun painted to look real, safety first, Always, don't have any props out in the open unless you've already informed everyone in that area and that local police. I can't stress it enough, please be safe. No project is worth risking the safety of you or your cast and crew. Logo. But that's it for today, my 10 tips for great gun effects. Of course, the muzzle flashes and the smoke assets that we use in this episode was from our new pack, which I'm really loving so far. Sean Mullen shot it and he did a fantastic job. So check that out on our store. And of course, the gun sounds in this episode are from our gun sound effects pack, which you can also find on our store. Links to all that in the notes below. But that's it, and I'll see you guys next week when I throw a tennis ball at the wall and then stare blankly into the snow. Mom, I'm coming! Hold on! Guys, I gotta go. Mom's calling me. Oh.